Hey guys, Rob from the Off Grid Tiny House. A little warmer today. It is uh, <clears throat> 43.1 Fahrenheit inside the tiny house at 72% humidity. And for some reason, <clears throat> the channel was. Moved on my remote here, so give me a second. I'll give you the outdoor temperature. 39.1 Fahrenheit outside. It's actually warmer in the tiny house without no heat on. Um, though humidity's still up. Um, so that's pretty good. Now let's switch over to Celsius for uh, our Euro European viewers here. Um, why isn't it switching? Oh, there we go. 6.3 degrees Celsius inside the tiny house and 3.9 degrees Celsius outside. So we'll switch back to Fahrenheit. Maybe. There we go. So, take you guys with me. Um, so I'll show you the storage room. We're getting things tidied up a little bit. I got the power on, of course, nice and sunny out. Um, <clears throat> we're getting closed in on the mess. So what I want to do now is uh, <clears throat> I need to figure out a nice spot for the aquaponics setup somewhere in here. And then I'm going to have to make its own little... Uh, off the grid grow system with the 12 volt lighting and uh, then enclose it in mylar this stuff the silver stuff that way the light stays where I want it to and <clears throat> also helps the plants because if you just put it above the plants sure that's okay but if you surround it with a shroud and above with this stuff the light bounces around that much more and also keeps the uh, plants warm as well like it does for survival keeping you warm so pretty nice that way um i gotta figure out a spot for this stuff i gotta continue cleaning so i have my work table back in use and then of course <clears throat> i'm gonna put my Put the uh, shelving back together because I have one kind of just doing nothing at this point. I may, what I may do is move the aquaponics where this uh, rack is here. And then <clears throat> if I have room, I'll move the rack s this way, sideways, up against the totes. So, like my back wall is still pretty much uh, screwed for now on uh, funding but uh yeah well let's go speaking of that guys let's go take a look at my lumber so i took all my lumber that i had left over from the tiny house projects here so we got obviously a quarter inch full sheet of uh wood there we got some heavy duty heavy duty uh, table material I think that came off the table so that's like that's almost an inch thick and then this stuff is the same thickness and that came off the very if you guys have watched me from the start <clears throat> my original battery box was right here and those were the lids for it so just some contacts. Oh, also, I do have some wood back here. My old uh, charge controller solar wall, which is this massive thing here that I want to use up. So this piece of wood as well, and it's the same thickness as well. Um, right there. So we have that to work with. We got a bunch of scrap 2x4s. And then I have some 
full length 2x4s here. And then the aluminum racking is nothing to do with this, but that's for the rest of my solar panels. I have some leftover plumbing, ABS, and then I have a, a gas pipe there, black iron. Um, so this is what I'm dealing with for creating something in the tiny house to get that back wall straightened up. So if you guys can throw me some ideas, um, <clears throat> it'll be pretty tough though because I, I can only use what I have here unless the YouTube money picks up. And if you want to help with that, just um, if you got if you're bored and want something to do and you won't feel like helping me out, go around all my videos and give them a nice thumbs up. That will help me uh, passively, and hopefully uh, things will improve. But that's what I'm looking at, guys, for my project for. Uh, getting that back wall done up, getting it fixed so it looks half decent. Like this is definitely budget. This is all leftover material that I'm going to have to use to get the back wall straightened up where the survival blanket stays up, stays put. Obviously it's falling even further down the wall now. Oh God. And then I'm going to have to, once that's parts done with the survival blanket stuck to the wall um, then I could start building some type of racking going across here with that lumber for the battery box well for the battery area it's I guess it'd be a box and then obviously what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use up all my leftover foam board Especially this guy. This guy was in. This is how thick the floor insulation is, guys. And uh, I'm going to be setting batteries on top of these so the batteries are not touching the cold floor. Because when I'm not here full time, this floor gets cold. And I mean super cold in the winter. So, and cold and batteries do not like each other. So, if I'm. If. Once this is all done, my plan, hopefully, depending on budget, it's totally dependent on you guys, my viewers, on to get my budget going up a little bit more. Um, so, once I get some type of uh, racking done back here, I can lay the foam board down. And obviously, it's all mismatched uh, sizes, so I'm going to have to figure out something there. Um... You know, I don't have, like I have a bunch of the smaller stuff, and then I have one giant piece. But what I can do possibly is run the smaller stuff lengthwise, and I should be, or yeah, lengthwise this way, and I should be able to get right across the floor. And then... I may have to div cut this piece up, divide it up, and for each battery, so we're way up off the floor. Or even just build a, with the lumber, build up off of the floor, so the lumber has the batteries raised up a couple inches at least above the floor, and then to be safe, just put some foam under the batteries anyway, and that way they're kind of more serviceable, they're across this way which I can do with those 2x4s for sure. Um, build some type of heavy duty shelving. So if I use those, that's a good idea. So if I use those full length 2x4s, how many do I have? Okay, it looks like I only have the one full length 2x4. I could be wrong, right? So. If I had two of those, I could use all this other scrap to build it up strong, build it like a long bench, basically, all the way across here. And I have to build it strong because batteries are heavy. So that will get me up off the floor. It will get the batteries off the floor so they're not, not going to be subject to a lot of cold off the floor, which is good. And then 
uh, above that bench I need to build some type of like a board material like this going across as well because I need to it needs to hold all my controls like the MPPT charge controller inverters and wiring and stuff like that similar to what I got here back here actually but on a massive scale much bigger scale than what I have going so that's the plan guys hopefully you guys uh, get where I'm going with this so my main thing is I'm struggling to find something that'll tape does not work adhesive spray does not work um, I do not like the uh, I can mechanically pin the survival blanket to the foam with like bobby pins but I don't like the idea of putting holes in the insulation but I may have to anyway that's the only thing I can come up with to get this stuff to stick flat against the foam without issue um, you know what I mean so it's kinda like oh my god on and on with this damn wall what's Rob doing right <laughs> I'm trying to get it solved guys I'm trying to get it solved but anyway storage room is looking better I got to keep working on it and we're gonna go from there but once I get this I, I think I'm not gonna move any of this stuff into the corners as of yet I want to get this damn wall done hopefully um, I'm not working today so I got the I got no work coming in today so I'm back at the tiny house trying to figure stuff out I'm gonna probably go play with the, um, the lumber over there to see what I can piece together to get a something something done over here the nice thing is I don't have to buy anything with what I have there so that's why I always tell people you know if you're doing a project save the scrap lumber after the fact because you're always gonna need it and it saves you a trip to the uh, lumber yard and the lumber yard's pretty scary nowadays anyway because you get it's crap lumber anymore I don't know what's going on but everything's gone cheap 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 but I gotta pull all this crap out of here this got this stuff's off that back wall so I don't have to move this this guy I gotta move out of there but I'll do that now and I'll hopefully figure out how what am I caught on on the floor caught on part of the uh, vinyl flooring there there we go so I'll just move him off to the side here and then we'll move this thing giant magnifying glass over here cool so I now have some working space back here <clears throat> and then the two by the full length two by four that I have over there hopefully I have two I don't know but I'm gonna t I have to do a measurement I have to screw there's two by four studs I went all the way to here with the framing so it's actually right here on this one and then on this one it actually goes past um, no I lied they're <laughs> right on the white the edges of the white there guys that's where I'm gonna have to run a 2x4 up and that side and then go in and over and connect top and bottom and probably the middle as well and that way it'll give me this much room pushed in you guys can see this thing goes into the wall quite a ways if I'm holding that in properly I don't know if you can see it from that side but definitely this side oh this one this ripped look at that oh never mind it, <laughs> that was a section that was taped Oh wow. Yeah, that's crap. So they were taped to one another when I did this, apparently. Yeah, this was ripped here. But, uh, 
Yeah, that's pretty bad. So anyway, I'll figure it out, guys. I just gotta get a way, get some way to get that thing pinned up, buttoned up, then I can finish. I'll build a bench back here. I'll build a giant solar wall because I'm gonna need it because I got to put the rest of the solar panels up. And I want to have this all done and ready for just hook, 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 uh, hooking the solar wires up to this thing. I got to have everything mounted. And that will clean up this whole area once I have all that stuff on the back wall there. And uh, what else? What else do I got to do? Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Hmm. Obviously get batteries, right? So, but before I even get to that stage, I'm still saving for batteries. It's going to be tough though because the slump lately in work and in YouTube income. Um, so, yeah, so batteries are on the back burner for me because the money's just not there. But I can at least get everything else prepped so I can get the solar wall bench done. And then it's off on this end of the trailer. So I basically have, <coughs> well, th I'll have three off-grid systems because I have two in the front now because they're separated from one another. But they work great. And then a giant one back here which will be nice because this area I want it to run all my heavy duty stuff like um, I have the off-grid fridge that I'd like to run back here on a pure sine wave inverter I also like to run my computer back here off of the pure sine wave um, computer doesn't take too much power but enough you know, and I want it to run on a pure sine wave inverter as to opposed to a mod sine wave. And then as for my TV, I will be, um, I believe I'm going to uh, invest in a 12 volt TV. That way I do not have to run an inverter to uh, watch TV, use a TV. Because I use a TV as, uh, you know, a regular TV. I get the free uh, aerial TV if I want to. I also will use it as a possibly a smart TV because I have my little boxy box thing so I can play YouTube videos off of it and everything like that. Music as well. And um, possibly use it as a, uh, well I, yeah I can use it as a PC monitor with the via the HDMI cord. So that's a, a nice possibility for as well. And then if I find out that um, my TV, um, uh, even on 12 volt on the baby battery system is, is, is not working out very good in playtime, I will hook a wire up and run it over here and then run the um, <coughs> run the lighting and ceiling fans off of the master battery bank back here, the, the giant one. And then uh, that will free up my blue guy back there for something else. Or we'll see. We'll see. I'll just maybe just run something just dedicated to the TV to back here. I could do that as well. So that's the plans, guys. And then also, like I say, I'm, um, I've been just a mess with my dad's cancer thing. I can't get any, seem to can't get anything done. It's, uh, it's tough. And, uh, we're going Thursday to see, the, to the big, big, big city hospital to see the cancer doctor. And he's, and my dad wants me to go into the, um, I guess the room with him when, the docs there, and uh, and we're gonna ask a bunch of questions and stuff like that. But I I'm I'm pretty much against chemo, and my dad is as well. And knowing my dad's thing with the with that heart that heart incident that he had, 
But they're not really worried about that anymore because they did all the tests in the world with the head doctor down there. And he told them, like, we can't do anything else for you, but just keep taking your pills and you have your defibrillator. Now, one thing we heard about chemo is it's really hard on the organs and the heart. So that's why I'm kind of like, well, let's, we just got the heart fixed, right, Doc? So let's uh, not, let's not, never go down the chemo route. Um, let's try all natural, uh, canvas oil. Obviously the doctor's gonna, <laughs> that's not in his wheelhouse. And uh, they're not gonna accept, they don't accept anything they're not trained in, pretty much. Um, which is sad. Like, I know they don't, they can't really experiment on the public, but come on guys, it's all natural. It's never killed anybody. Whereas alcohol, smoking, all that stuff have. Um, and I'm talking about ingesting the oil, not smoking it, guys. That's what you do. Anybody tells you you smoke it is a moron. All right. <laughs> um, so, and then the other option I also said, my dad doesn't have symptoms because the tumor is not active. Thank God. But what, what about not doing anything at all and waiting until pot is legalized here in Canada and then I can treat him DIY at home with cannabis oil grown by us. And we obviously need the certain kind, which is the indica strain, which is the sedative strain. There's two strains, sativa and indica. For my dad's uh, choice, I need uh, the indica, and it has to be a high THC level, as high as you can get, and um, that's the type required for my dad. Now, the one thing to caution everybody, I went to phoenixtears.org, which is, the Rick, is Rick Simpson's website, who came up with this and has helped thousands of people, um, thousands of people online, testimonials, everything. They beat their cancer just on the cannabis oil, guys. And it's and it, I don't know why the government is not recognizing this. It's crazy. Okay, so next, um, on his website, he has a whole thing, how to make it, dosage, all the information you guys want to know about it, go see phoenixtears.org or just Google Phoenix Tears and it'll, there, I think they have like org.com.ca. I'm not sure, but just Google it. Anyway, it says it in there. If you're on high blood pressure meds, the plant is so powerful that you should maybe possibly stop taking your high blood pressure meds when taking this stuff because it lowers your blood pressure. It's basically, a, the thing is a cure-all, guys. I'm, I'm telling you. And you don't have to listen to me. Go look it up. Uh, and remember, guys, don't be looking it up on the fake news websites. I have some of my, some of my friends online <clears throat> they tell me they get their media from all, a lot of sources, but then <clears throat> when they send me stuff, it's fake news, and I'm like, I thought you told me <laughs> you check this stuff out, and then I get confused whether they're trying to joke, joke with me or they actually don't know what the difference between fake news and real news is, or... Whatever. It's a problem. I'm not going to get into it. If you guys want to believe what you believe, then go for it. But I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who likes to walk around not, blind, not with a blindfold on my eyes, being led by fake news media. I like to know um, what's going on in reality. <clears throat> so, yeah, so that's... That's what's going on for the... So after Thursday, guys, I'll have more information for you 
hopefully positive. So send the prayers, send the thoughts, all that stuff. We're going to need it. Though, my dad's never had symptoms since being diagnosed with this. So it's kind of like, do we even do anything? I, I'm, I'm, to me, I want to wait be, uh, before we do anything. Like, of course, take some more images, whatever, tests, whatever. Do not give them chemo because if we wait and do nothing um, until July, that is, till legalization day, guys, then I can start giving him cannabis oil. And I need to give him 60 grams of cannabis oil. And then he has to take a, a gram a month for maintenance, I believe. That's what he recommends, Rick Simpson. So <clears throat> that is the story, guys. So it's, uh, you know, it's got, it's got, got me rattled, but he's, you know, he's not as uh, concerned as he was. Which is good. I got his morals, uh, morale back up um, after giving him all these other natural treatments at home. Apricot seed, dandelion root, uh, dandelion root tea, hemp oil. Now, I've had people come on and say, well, hemp oil is not going to cure the cancer. <coughs> Do you know that for a fact? I don't think anybody knows that for a fact. And guess what? It's legal. And it's something I can give him before um, July, when it's legalized, when the real stuff is legalized. So obviously I'm going to give it to him, and it's cost me money to do it, but it's my dad. So guess what? I'm doing it. And I know it's taken away from the off-grid tiny house, guys, but that's, uh, that's the way life goes sometimes. And it's a really kick in the nuts when YouTube starts uh, tightening the wallet up on me as well. So, thanks YouTube. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think that's it. That's all I want to say for now. Um, what else? Oh. What is that noise? Hmm. Must have been a bird or something on the roof. Um, so, yeah, so, anyway. Um, also. The pot situation here. When it's legalized, I can grow up to four plants per residence. Okay, they have to be a certain height, yada yada, all that fun stuff. I don't care because we're gonna get this disease licked and if... Now think about this guys. What if we get it cured by the cannabis oil? What are you gonna say then to me? And what are you gonna believe then? Right? Like, it's... This is, uh... How, think of how many people have died from cancer because the government would not look into this. So, it's pretty sick. And I'm also pretty pissed at the, uh... The Cancer Society charities. What a joke. What a joke! They know the. They know cannabis works, but oh no, they they don't admit it because they want the money to keep coming in. Oh my God, I we live in one hell of a twilight zone, guys. All that's all I know. And then, <clears throat> hopefully, when everything settles out and we get this stuff done, I can get the tiny house finished off, and hopefully get land. Now, if I don't get land, guys, I'm going to run into a situation where I'm going to have to possibly permanently live here in this 
trailer yard, which is fine. I don't mind that. Especially if I get internet and stuff later on, if I get some kind of hookup, that'd be nice. Because then I could do live broadcasts and video from inside the tiny house when I'm living here. But, I, we, I don't know. We're living in a world where I can't buy land and put a friggin' trailer on it because the government has a problem with that. Really? Jeez, way out in the country too. They got a problem with it. What is going on? We're living in a friggin' dictatorship type crap going on. That's what it is. Totally against living off the grid. That's what they are, the government. Yeah, so anyway, <clears throat> that's my big rant today. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll mess around with the lumber over there. See what I can figure out. And get something done, guys, because, uh, you know, I got to get something done in here. So, enough talking. See you guys in a bit.